let's talk about deviance. Deviance in its most easy to understand form is a violation of socially approved expectations. So deviance is just when we go outside of the mark of what society says is okay or acceptable. This could be something really simple, like some of the social norms you read about in your chapter on um, culture, like belching at the table, or it could be something much more serious, like um, you know committing a serious crime. So deviance is kind of on a spectrum between what society considers absolutely wrong and just what society considers weird or not really acceptable, right? So then there's all kinds of things in between there. Deviance is relative, so it depends, right, on where you are, when you are, the period in, in time, but also the actual, the actual time, I'll, I'll come back to that. Um, so where you are, when you are there, and who you are. So consider, you know, where the, the deviance that depends on where you are. Um, something like wearing, uh, what you wear at a swimming pool, as we've talked about before in discussions, is not acceptable if you were to wear that at a grocery store. So the exact same thing, completely different reactions, depending on where you are. And of course that is the same across cultures. What we eat here that's considered acceptable would not be acceptable in some other countries and vice versa. Um, the period in time, the period in time and the actual time. So coming back to that, obviously some things that are considered perfectly normal now were not, not that long ago. Women wearing pants, for example, didn't become really acceptable until the mid 1900s, so 1950s-ish. Um, interracial marriage, you would be imprisoned for marrying outside of your race up until 1967 in the US. That's an interesting one because you may still be considered deviant for marrying outside of your race in some parts of the United States, but you wouldn't be so deviant that you're considered a criminal right? That spectrum. Um, we enforce these social norms or yeah, social norms, social expectations ourselves by inflicting sanctions upon other people. So how do you know when you're doing something deviant? If it's not like a law, right? Where you're getting a citation or something of that, of that nature, then other people kind of let you know by giving you funny looks, saying something directly to you, maybe posting something online about you that this person did not follow what society says they're supposed to do through what they wore, what they say, the job they took, whatever. If we don't fit into that very narrow, it's more narrow than you may think. If we go outside of that for what society expects of us, then other people will use sanctions against us. And, you know, it would be nice to think that none of us have ever done this to others, tried to push them back into the societal box, but we probably have. Even if it's just kind of a, you see someone and you're like, what is that person wearing? And you make a face. Well, if enough, if that happens enough times to someone, they start to realize I don't fit in the box, you know, for other people. So those are sanctions and those can also be positive. So if you do something outside of the norm that is deviant, but good, then we enforce positive sanctions like a reward, a trophy, a promotion. All of those would be a form of a sanction. I also mentioned that uh, deviance varies depending upon who you are. Typically the more power you have, the more freedom you have to move within your own bubble set of societal expectations. You're allowed to express yourself more freely. Now, here we could go into a whole conversation that is relevant to like race and gender and social class here, but we're, I'm gonna save all of that. <laughs> um, but for the purposes of, of this particular section of the textbook, typically the more power, the more freedom that 
you are able to have with some norms. However, sometimes the more power you have, the more limited you are in the type of deviance that is acceptable to commit. Um, consider your social media, maybe using curse words on social media. Does anyone do that? Um, as a college student, I mean, who cares, right? I mean, if you, if you use, a, you know, a curse word on your Instagram or whatever, it's probably not a big deal. If you then move into a different rank of your societal bubble where you have a job that requires people to look up to you in some way, now using that type of language on social media, not, not so great, right? Um, for some people, what if you move into a position where you're a rock star, you know, uh, that's a, that's definitely not a title. You're a, a you know, some artistic, uh, an, an artistic position. In that case, it may be completely acceptable for you to use offensive language on your social media. I mean, what I'm trying to get at is that it just depends, right? And all of these things have been taught to you throughout the course of your life and will continue to be taught to you throughout the course of your life. The difference in right and wrong versus rude and not rude, you know, all along that spectrum, we are being taught our entire lives where it is okay to fit and where we personally feel that we fit and hoping that we can find an alignment between those two um, for our own personal, uh, you know, identity and peace. I hope this made sense and that I covered everything. I think I did as a, again, this was, there's a lot more to deviance, a lot more, but this, for where we are in the text, this is a good overview.